Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. I'm Serge. Joining me today, I have a Nelly. I am here. And a Wheeler. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Speaking of great to be here, we're glad to be here with your support of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Welcome to part one of our Brothers War set review. Now, with our set reviews, a reminder, these are not exhaustive or comprehensive. We are not going to talk about every single card in the set. Only the ones that we think are relevant to the format, even if it's making a splash somewhere else, if we don't think it's playable for us, we're probably not going to talk about it. That being said, if you think we missed a card, let us know down in the comments below. Today, we're going to be covering white, blue, and black. And also, there's a, um, there's a mechanic here where the artifacts have a color identity where they're being cast for a color as well as an artifact for the purposes of card distribution so we don't just have one mega episode on artifacts everything that has that ability for a color is in that color so just to, to get ahead of those comments you're like but that's not a, a, a white card that's an artifact it's white for the set review wheeler if you can cast it with those colors there may be some artifacts with an activated ability yeah in certain colors thank you yes just to clarify yeah all right, without further ado, let's get on into it. Wheeler, start us off. Autonomous Assembler. A five-mana artifact creature that's an assembly worker, and it's a four-five. But wait, there's a new mechanic. It's called Prototype. Andre 3000 had it all the... Nope. <laughs> all right, great. Uh, so uh, you may cast this spell with different mana cost, color, and size. Size referring to power and toughness. Uh it keeps its abilities and types. So you could pay this for five and get a four five, or you could play this for one in a white and get a two two. Capiche? Great. With you so far. Cool. Uh, and then it has the abilities of vigilance and pay one tap, put a one one counter on target assembly worker you control, which can be itself, which can be a Mishra's workshop and a Mishra's factory whatever the land is called the, whatever the new, new creature one. lands yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um or a mute vault i'm mostly yeah, yeah. oh there yeah. you go i'm mostly casting this for two i think um that's a pretty reasonable ability like a two mana two two that gets bigger yeah either by itself uh or can pass around you know the love is kind of hot um i think that we even before this set there's just so much untapped potential in artifact decks, like creature-based artifact decks, board-based artifact decks. And uh, unfortunately, Mishra's Self-Replicator is not one of those cards that meets that level Probably of Probably not going to see a lot of play in our format, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Paul's like, but I found one. I found an assembly worker. Yeah, I, I think it's it's relatively untapped, and white is one of the best colors for it because you get you know Esper Sentinel, Stoneforge Mystic, Ether Sworn Canonist. The and all plus two plus two. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. what is that steel? called? Oh, Hard tempered steel. Tempered, tempered steel. steel. Yeah. Oh, baby. That brings me back. Yeah. And there's still a lot of work to do uh, in finding out, you know, all the different variations. But I think this one could pop up because, well, five is also just reasonable. Like if your point spread yeah. is like soul ring, mana crypt, mana vault or something like that. Yeah. You could slam this card. It's also easy for like. artifact decks just to make a lot of mana. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Tolarian Academy is a yeah. hell of a drug. Um, so, yeah. If you're a white artifact deck that's looking to uh, punch face, this could be the assembler for you. All right, real quick before we move on to other cards, let's just talk about prototype as a mechanic right now because I was having a really hard time evaluating these cards. It's like reverse kicker is the best way I can think of it. You're making a face, Wheeler. 10 out of 10. You love it? 10 out of 10. I like it I a lot love too. it. Yeah, love it so much. Nelly. Uh, the flexibility of having a split card that's a creature that gives you a payoff, you know, in one direction or the other, uh, I think is really valuable. You know, it's going to be on a bunch of different cards. Some of them will be bad, but this is an <laughs> example of a good one oh, yeah. where you're happy to pay the five if it's just spare mana when you top deck this late in the game, but you have a plan to play this on curve as well. And maybe that'll be what most of them are like. I'm not sure yet. I'm really curious if there's going to be any of the cards that you actually ignore the prototype ability you only run for the other side. That's probably going to be rare. I think you're supposed to be looking at it for the, the first line of text or the first ability or however the prototype form. Even if the first line, like if you're saddling up to reanimated or cheated out as the big idiot yeah. is your game plan. Like as long as the prototype is like 
in the realm of I could do this. Sure, it's five think, mana or something. Yeah. Like, or, or four mana. Or it's yeah. just splash color, maybe. Yeah. There's a clone coming up that I yeah. think is a yeah. great example. That's, but we'll get that's to that. the one I was really yeah, curious we'll about. We'll get to that when we get to that. All right, well then let's move on. Nelly. In the trenches, an enchantment for one and white, white that says creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Oh, cool. It's a functional reprint of Glorious Anthem. Love that for white weenie players. Okay, next card. Wait, no, there's more. <laughs> oh. oh, you can also pay five and a white to exile target non-land permanent you don't control until in the trenches leaves the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery and only once. So that's neat. I think the only once templating we've seen... I, like, have we seen it on Arena, but not on paper yet? Yeah. Yeah, so it feels like, you know, as a judge, I'm a little bit nervous, but this card is great. Like, we got Glorious Anthem, but now it's also an Oblivion Ring for a bunch of men. Like, that's a lot of mana that you're not always going to have the six to do it. But I was going to say, for only once, there are some examples. There are some enchantments that have different modes, and they say pick each mode only once. Right, okay. So, so it's, not, have, it's like, not completely unheard of in paper. Like Demonic right? Pact. It's yeah. Like pick each mode only once. But I can, yeah. I can see your faces. You're like, this isn't interesting thing to keep track of especially if they have the ability to get the card out of exile somehow and you yeah. just have to remember it but like or like you blink you're in the trenches and then like they're gonna f you're gonna forget to give the the creature back and then you steal another one and then yeah. the end of the game the opponent's like judge and the judge is just like in tears um <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't know. This card seems like a 10 out of 10. Like, Glorious Anthem, yeah. I believe, is playable already in token strategies or just uh, pushing white dorks, like the, the, the white weenie fight version. And this is a Glorious Anthem that's just strictly better. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. If you play Glorious Anthem, now you want to have this. <laughs> uh, next up is me. Kayla? Kyla? Kayla. Kayla's okay. Command. This is a sorcery for one white white, and you get to choose two. Create a 2-2 two, two colorless construct artifact creature token. Put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control. It gains double strike until end of turn. Search your library for a basic planes card. Notably, there are other cards that just say planes. This, I know, we're shaking our head. because Gavin. Uh, <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> and uh, gain two life and scry two. I don't mind this. I think this has a lot of flexibility, not not only in the modes, but in the particular board states you want to play it in. In the early game, it can get you a land and make a creature. In the late game, uh, plus one, plus one, and double strike is really going to get some people. And uh, one of the lines I'm really sad about is basic planes, because there's a plane pattern in Canadian Highlander where you could find one of the planes cards that uh, cycled. Mm -hmm. and it would give you this like pseudo card draw and white and it's very sad that you don't get that line here because that would make this card so much better i don't know if i'd put this in every white deck but i think this does enough that you'd be you'd be pretty happy like i would die to this card and not not shake my head and be like what's this doing in this deck the the thing about modal cards is that when you look at the cheap ones, you usually kind of go like, oh, this is so uh, timid compared to like Cryptic Command or Mystic mm. Confluence or whatever. But also, I mean, it's just three mana. We're not always going to get Colgan's Command. But <laughs> like a three mana spell that makes a 2-2 two -two and then also permanently buffs a creature and then either smacks your opponent for a bajillion or it pushes a creature over the edge to kill a Planeswalker is pretty nice. Yep. Like... The last two modes are, you know... Definitely the weakest of the two. Sure, but when they come up, like, yeah. when they're relevant, they're... Like, there are there are game states you're going to be in where you're like, I need some gas. Mm -hmm. And a scry, like, a shuffle, and then a scry, and a land in hand, you're like... I mean, I could end up casting this card for the last two modes, because you keep it in for the, the first two, but the flexibility of, like, a bad board state, it's slow, your opponents resolve the Planeswalker, and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I <laughs> dig, please. Yeah. yeah, if you're on the back foot and you choose mode one and mode three, I think you're doing a great job yeah. of yeah. guaranteeing your life in, in terms of untapping, mm -hmm. right? All right, let's move on. Wheeler. Lay down arms. One white for a sorcery. Exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. Its controller gains three life. So that's pretty all right. I, anytime we get a new removal spell, people tend to jump to being like, that's got to be good, right? And it's like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> but this one, I think, I think I'm down to clown with it. Um, if it's getting rid of a mana dork, I'm actually just super excited about that. Uh, if I'm hitting like anything three or less, 
I'm all right. I don't care if they gain three life. Hitting three or less for one mana is pretty clutch. The unfortunate part of this card is that it's not really good in like a three color deck. And it's also just not good in mono white. Yeah. Like DNT plays a lot of planes, but it also plays a lot of Horizon Canopies yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Mutavolts and all that. Arrakis and Ancient Tomb. Yeah. I'm comparing this to what's the. I need to go on an aside really quickly here. I Many long term viewers of the show will be like, man, why does Search never know the name of cards? I think I just have to accept the fact that I don't. I am bad with names. I'm just bad with names. It's I have. Nelson Wheeler who <laughs> i have like a, a tremendous amount of card information in my brain but i can never remember the name so i'll describe the card and luckily i have two very handsome and smart co-hosts who will always help me here single black instant spell um minus one minus one for the number of the file i was gonna let you finish your sentence but defile. yeah yeah like this isn't defile but really? defile is another card that was that was pretty dang good and never sees play. Early so, bird gets the worm, Nelson. That's true. Yeah, you can have it. Look at all those worms you could have. So, like, oh. if we're not playing Defile, why are we going to play this new removal spell? White is better than black in uh, Canadian Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> in this... Okay, Sorry, hold, no, on, like, hold on, bye, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. Oh, come on. For only podcast viewers, Nelson walked out of the room. <laughs> I mean, the real answer is that, like, on turn one, if you go basic land and then play this spell, um, the white spell kills Deathrite Shaman. That's pretty much it. Or it gets rid of, like, Isamaru. Uh, Power and toughness just isn't the same as mana value. Yeah. yeah. I, that's that's very fair. Yeah. yeah it gets rid of any token. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think yeah, about that. Yeah, that's huge. Getting rid of a Karnstruck for one mana. Not is even a Karnstruck, a uh, Meritlash. All right, you know, yeah, you might be, you might be selling me on this one here. Yeah. Okay. It also exiles. It is a sorcery. No one's mentioned that it's a yeah, sorcery. It's very big. That so you got to, you got to put yeah. up with it being a sorcery. Yeah. But I just think, yeah, the fact that it exiles in like, in our format, getting two planes is gonna be enough for what you want to do most of the time. The more I think about it too, the more I'm actually just okay playing this in Death and Taxes because, like, yeah, you play a lot of utility lands, but. That deck can also just like maybe it doesn't need every field of ruin, or maybe certain <laughs> maybe certain versions of it sure. don't play the field of ruin dust bowl or whatever, because that deck's points can be whatever, yeah. And so you can build accordingly. But right. uh, yeah, like this card. Next up, Nelly, Loran of the Third Path, two generic and a white for a two-one legendary human artificer with vigilance and. When this enters the battlefield, disrupt one target enchantment or artifact. Who white Rex Sage, legendary, but vigilance. Eh, wait, there's more text. Tap you and target opponent each draw a card. Oh, skill testing. I love lots of things about this. The main thing that I love is that we have another Rex Sage. Yep. <laughs> uh, having Rex Sages is important. Uh, we all need to blow up artifacts sometimes. And I wish that we didn't, because I'm usually the one, like Wheeler's groaning here, that yeah. gets their hey, back blown yeah. up. No, I mean, we both, but it, it's obviously good. It's obviously playable. Yeah. Um, this is one of the ones where it's like being legendary is actually kind of a bonus. I was going to say, it with yeah. your own Caracas. You're, you're running Caracas if you're the yeah. mono white deck here. And so, you get, you're like, yeah, Caracas me, no. I dare you. Yeah, so you can just make the Academy deck's life really miserable. And then the third ability, I don't know how often you're going to activate it. This That kind of effect, I'm always like nervous that I think it's right, but it turns out that I'm wrong. White plays Spirit of the Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Combo yeah. with Spirit of the Labyrinth, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, do it on their turn, right? Yeah. But yeah, this looks like a solid include. Yep. <laughs> All right, next up. We've got Miral, Shield of Argiv. I probably pronounced every ah. word other than shield wrong in that sentence, but I digress. You four, mean shelled? <laughs> four mana, three, four, legendary human soldier for three and a white. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, mm. or enchantments. <laughs> Whenever Mural attacks, create X 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers you control. Now, often on this format, when we're evaluating format, this show, and talking about our format, when we're evaluating four drops, you have to ask yourself, is this better than every other four mana finisher that you have access to? And now, finally, I think the answer is yes. This is very good. This is, uh, and I think this is, Man meta dependent though i think you're bringing this in if you're worried that your opponents are doing stuff to shut you down on your turn 
Um, if you're like sort of a D&T deck, if you're trying to, I wish it said, you know, spells or other things. Like it, it does a pretty good job of saying no to what your opponent wants to do and saying yes to killing your opponent. Also, if you're playing human or soldiers, I think this is pretty good. I, I think this card dethrones Brim as, as the like poster child of this gets absolutely shrecked by Caracas in that crack. Like the first light of text doesn't stop Caracas. Yeah. But also does that really matter? <laughs> is that fine? You know, that's okay. It's good with Brim as too. Like, but yeah. Does Adeline also make soldiers? Nah, uh, humans. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe. Yeah. But, but she doesn't say where X is the number of non-token soldiers you control. Yeah. So it yeah, is yeah, just a snowball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Hey, all you hero of blade hold <laughs> truthers out there, hero of blade hold doesn't have haste either. Okay. So I don't know. I think this is a fair, it basically an upgrade because of the, the tax. This is one of those sets where you're going to go back to Scryfall and you're just going to search soldier and start just thinking to yourself like, okay, okay. <laughs> right. I said it in uh dominary United. They can check the tape. Yeah. We got a yeah. tribal. We got to re up on the FNPF uh, tribal night. Pretty mm -hmm. soon, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, Wheeler. Recommission. One in a white for a sorcery. Return target artifact or creature with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If a creature enters the battlefield this way, it enters with an additional 1 1 counter on it. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Um, the Wow. Okay. So, this is one of these th cards where this is, uh, I, it's good. It's good. Um, the two decks where I'm like absolutely trying it is the Mono White or I guess Orzov Ruin Your Evening Boo. Uh, deck. because <laughs> That deck doesn't need to get better. <laughs> no, I, I mean, think of it. I can now attack with a 2-5 Order of White Clay. <laughs> <laughs> um, or I could just return a skull clamp if I want. Uh, get back Luris. Uh, yeah, I can get back my Luris. <laughs> Ooh. Um, that's kind of hot. Oh, they blew up my Gite. Well, try to deal with it again. And uh, I mean, it, that kind of deck is just filled with ETBs and, and things that you really want to get rid of and have a hard time getting rid of. And then when you finally do it, if they get it back, you just feel helpless. Sir, do you know what that feels like, right? Uh, and then the other deck is, and this is a little hot to the presses, but I've been jamming a lot of these welder decks, like three color artifact, grindy, like mid range slash board control decks. And I would kill to have this card because again, getting back a Thopter Foundry or getting back a Luris, getting back a Trinket Mage. Just Goblin Engineer right into this thing. Getting back up. Yeah. You can reanimate your own garbage engineer. You can engineer for something and then bring it back. Yeah. Um, and the flexibility of hitting both artifact or creature is huge. Yeah. Like people are like, what about reanimate? What about unearth? And it's like, well, I can't unearth my crucible worlds now, can I, Twitch chat? As soon as you said GTA, though, I was just like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, that's because like as somebody who's had to answer GTA before, having to answer it twice, you're like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> From a card that has like no downside yeah. in an aggressive deck, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The last time it's been a while, but the last time I looked through like an Esper tournament winning time vault deck, they were playing reconstruction. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. even think about time vault. And now for one more mana, you can just be like, oh, get it into play. Oh, why'd you have to mention Time Vault, Nelson? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, this card's pretty nuts. Yeah. Uh, for people who are curious about these Welder decks, Wheeler did just recently pilot it on our Friday Night Paper Fight from the LRRMTG like, Twitch streams. So go back and watch the Vault if you want to see a version of the deck. Obviously, the version he was piloting didn't have white in it, but uh, it seemed good. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed very good. It's pretty It's pretty good core. Yeah. Uh, anything else on recommission? Should we move on? Nope. Card's great. Nelly. Recruitment officer. One white for a 2-1 human soldier. I'm already in. This yeah. card's great. Yeah, yeah, Done. Checks all the boxes, There's right? There's words, though. Three and a white. For a look at the top four cards of your library, you may reveal a creature card with mana value three or less from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random mortar. What? You get a you get a green spell strapped to your Savannah Lion now. That's fantastic. White is taking over. Um, that's expensive, but still, you it's on a Savannah Alliance. Yeah. Like... And it draws cards. <laughs> Best of Lion of all time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I like Dauntless Bodyguard too. And I like the flying one from Ixalan, but 
This still seems a cut above. Yeah. All right, real quick, where are you playing it? Just in Soldier Tribal or Aggro White Weenie. <laughs> all right. Like, those. that's the only thing yeah. I can think of. I don't know. Do you want it in... No, that's all you got. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yep. All right. Next up, uh, Sanwell, Avenger Ace. Now, it's worth mentioning, this is one of the Commander cards. I think that's the only one we're going to be covering today, but full disclosure... That's where this is from. Sanwell, Avenger Ace, is a 2-mana 3-1 legendary human pilot for 1 and a white. As long as an artifact creature you control is attacking, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Sanwell. And whenever Sanwell becomes tapped, exile the top 6 cards of your library. You may cast a vehicle or artifact creature spell from among them. Put them... Uh, pardon me. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I keep wanting this deck to happen. There's like six effects now, particularly in like red, white dwarves that are when you tap, look and dig at mostly for vehicles, which is what I'm kind of addressing right now. The fact that makes Sanwell really good here is the fact that it also hits artifact creatures. Now, if Sanwell was also an artifact creature, then you'd have like so many redundancies and so many boxes checked that you'd be really, really excited and absolutely pop off about this card. I'm excited about this card i don't know if it's good so there is as wheeler mentioned earlier already a density of really good white artifact creatures and just other good artifact creatures that are fantastic and every time they print a artifact or vehicle matters cards i i mean like is this a slam dunk but the more of those cards you put in the more you dilute the pool of actual good artifact creatures that it synergizes with so it's really it's really tough to find that balance and, I mean, I guess a, a fantastic example of that balance is Winota, right? Is probably an example more people are familiar with. Winota is a card that cares about, is it humans and non-humans? Yeah. Yeah. And so you need you need to find that number between both. And with a card like Sanwell, I don't know what that is. I do know I love this card and I want to brew with it and it gets the creative juices flowing. I just don't know if it's good. <laughs> I think the card's good enough to win a tournament, you know? Like, I look at this and that deck, and there there's redundancy, too, because this there's a Loshin, which is from, like, the Strixhaven Commander decks, where it's an elephant that has, like, the reverse of this. It says attacking artifact creatures uh, can't be... They prevent all damage dealt to attacking artifact creatures. Yeah. And whenever an artifact creature ETBs, you draw a card. Um and so I think there's enough density of like these really good cards that bolster your, I almost swore on the podcast, <laughs> bolster your less than- Your, your bad ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're even happy to attack with this in like um, a Phyrexian Revoker, right? Yeah, great. But the like the way you set it up is you put a piece of equipment on this or something, you know, you make it or you make it so that- your opponent is not incentivized to block this because they need to kill the artifact creature in order to deal with this. And you could mm -hmm. like cheat damage through or whatever. Like it's, I mean, a two out of three one with indestructible when attacking is, well, I mean, sorry, prevent all damage. It's not yeah, indestructible. Sure. Like it's, it's kind of neat. Yeah. All right. Shall we move on? Yes, let's. Siege Veteran. Two and a white for a 2-2 human soldier. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on a target creature you control. And whenever another non-token soldier you control dies, you create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. Slam dunk. Playing this in D&T. So good. Uh, three mana 2-2 two, two is kind of like, uh, but yep. that's okay. All your cards are pretty miserable in that deck anyways. <laughs> Still one of the best decks in the format. Um, has the... Uh, Everybody get ready. Ancient Tomb Mana. Uh, the Ancient Tomb Mana makes this pretty easy to cast off your like fast mana, uh, or you know it's cheap enough you can play it off a of Mox, even like an off-color Mox. And then it's just a Luminar Casperin. Yep. Which is already just like one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah. That also just makes more creatures. Yeah. Great. Cool. That's it. <laughs> it's really good. All right, Nelly. Steel Seraph. Uh, six colorless artifact creature, angel, five, four with flying. And at the beginning of combat on your, on your turn, target creature you control gains your choice of flying, vigilance, or lifelink until end of turn. So this already has flying, uh, but you can give something else flying, or you can give this vigilance or lifelink. So 
The six mana for, like, the Bane Slayer, basically. You got a five power flying lifelink at minimum, but it also has prototype for one generic and two white sips, pips. So one white, white, and then its size is a three, three. So you get to pick. You can have a three mana, three, three flying vigilance or lifelink, or you can have a six mana, five, four flying with vigilance or lifelink, or you're moving the abilities around. It's, like, got that flexibility. So... Yeah, seems hot. I'm not entirely sure which deck to put it in. Maybe Jeskai mid-range. It seems okay in that deck. Artifact aggro. Artifact yeah. aggro. You just want to pay the top right, or you want to put no. in that same with a white deck. Even the about. one white white. Like, yeah. If you're if you're going base heavy, you know you need to pips because we were talking about that enchantment. I've already forgotten the Tempered name. Tempered steel. Tempered, Tempered steel. steel. Like yeah. that's the exact same CSC sure. as Tempered steel. Imagine this yeah. coming down as a five five, right? <laughs> Like yeah. you're actually kind of if you're playing white in the artifact deck, you you're already pip hungry. You're just kind of you just kind of deal with that. I like the three mana version more than the six mana version. Sure. Yeah, I don't know how often you're. I mean, again, it's just like if I can cast a six mana, I it's probably like what I need to win that game. Where you're just like, oh my god, why do I have six lands in this deck? <laughs> oh, Bane Slayer Angel, right? That's okay. Uh, but yeah, I love just slamming this on three and then being like, okay, Thalia. Fly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thalia Lifelink, it's got first strike already. Yeah. What a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Card's real good. I know that we were just talking about how there's too many threes in DNT, so I didn't want to immediately jump and say just put it in DNT, but like <laughs> it's a lot of a card. I yeah. it's funny. I think that we're now at a point where DNT like has its role, and there are just other aggressive decks in white that have popped up that can fill these niches, like the, the various niches, like an artifact uh, aggressive deck or soldier tribal or uh, glorious anthem dot deck that I've, just pushed out all the Isamaru's and whatnot. Yeah, right? I haven't played Celestia in a hot minute, but I could see jumping a questing beast or something, right? Oh my God, yeah. Even, even just Tarmac right? Boy. Yeah, right? just, yeah, <laughs> jump your big scoos yeah. that's a 6-6. Six, six, Kasali right? Pride Mage into this is pretty hot too. Attack yeah. with a 3-3 three, three lifelinker. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. All right, mm. next up. And this is actually the final white card. Uh, Takasia's Welcome. Takasia? Takasia. Takasia. Takasia's Welcome. Yeah. Three man enchantment for two and a white. Whenever one or more creatures with mana value three or less enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. All right. How many different times do we have to try and reprint Mentor of the Meek before we finally play it? <laughs> is this the one? <laughs> we got a standing evasion well, from Wheeler here. It's the Argivian, uh, or it's the Enchantress's presence of Mentor of the Meek, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just take as many of these as they'll give me. <laughs> you want to play Welcoming Mentor of the Meek Welcoming Vampire, tribal. Mentor yeah. of the Meek. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is going right into Mono White Ruin your evening. I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the important thing to note here is you don't have to pay, which is great. Like mm -hmm. once you've once you've invested a three mana, there's no like pay one when it enters the battlefield or whatever. And the downside is it only happens one each turn, but that's okay. Yeah, you're you're probably pretty happy with that. I'm not huge on effects like this personally. I think it needs a very specific deck because like DNT would rather just play a creature to attack. Uh, the advantage of Mentor the Meek is it's also a body and it can apply pressure. So it being on an enchantment has pros and cons so uh, i don't immediately have a home for this wheeler you want to put it in ruin your evening is there any other other decks <laughs> no i think that's it you're right in saying that like it needs a very specific kind of shell to go along with and the fact that we like it it when you say needs it needs it or otherwise this is just stone unplayable <laughs> yeah. people really people will flock to these cards typically they're like oh my god i draw a card each turn and then i draw a card on their turn too and it's always like on some like five mana enchantment or something <laughs> or a four mana enchantment when it's just like why not cast natural or or why not play commander um and instead <laughs> It's okay. I'm on the CAG. I can say that. Uh, but but this one, three, much more reasonable. Yeah. This is in Savine's rec range, too. Like a bunch of, you know, little add ons to that. And the deck in mind, the Ruin Your Evening, is one that can, you know, cast Ephemerate, have uh, Eldrazi Displacers, Charming Prince Triggers, Token Generation. I'm going to need a copy of that deck list. Every time you mention this, people in the comments are like, what's this deck? I can't find it. So I'm going to. Serge Jaeger promised there's going to be a link to that sure. deck in the description below. And if it's not there, it's because Wheeler failed. 
So okay. I don't know. That was that was mean of me. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. But people are gonna people want to see this deck. Yeah. Oh, I'll bring it to a Friday night paper fight. No, 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 no. no. It's no, okay. No, no, you said no, they no, want to no. see it. Ah. North, North. How about a showdown? How about a five-hour showdown recording period? Where I just played this into various aggro. Okay, decks. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, it's okay. You're okay. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on this, or shall we move on to blue? Oh, let's move on to blue. All right, Wheeler, start us off with blue. Arcane Proxy. Let's go. Seven mana for a 4-3 artifact creature wizard uh, that says when Arcane Proxy enters the battlefield, if you cast it, exile target instant or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to Arcane Proxy's power from your graveyard. Copy that. Cast without paying its mana cost. But wait, it also has prototype for one blue blue and then it's a two one. So you either play seven mana for a four three that casts something that uh, costs four or less from your graveyard. But if you're not uh, Rockefeller, you're probably casting it for three. So you get a three mana two one that casts a spell that's two or less from your graveyard. And it's an artifact creature. And I'm going to give uh, this a shot in the Welter decks because I'll recast Lightning Bolt. I'll recast, you know. Entomb? Entomb. You're jamming that, right? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, sorry. No. Is there something like that? Just the Goblin Engineer, I guess, right? Sorry. Just the Engineer. Okay. Um, But yeah, it's... Ponder. Yeah. Yeah, the, in that just, deck, right? Don't need yeah. to get fancy with these cards. People sure. always try to get way too fancy. You Just kill their stuff. <laughs> just draw some extra cards. Maybe cast a transmute artifact if you are feeling spicy, but you know. There's of course gonna be the question of does this see play in Academy or maybe any of like the blue red spells matters decks? Cause it, it, it the nearest comparison would be Snapcaster. And like, oh, maybe this also goes in decks that already play Snapcaster. No, Snapcaster is a whole different beast. This is just too slow if you're trying to well. You don't have to pay for the spell. So yeah. in some cases, you're actually ahead on mana. doesn't have flash, so you can't use it to counter spells, which is why Snapcaster is so good. But like, it, it is worth having that conversation about this card, right? Okay. Can't quite cast Tinker for three. Okay, you know what? I, I've, thought of a, I've thought of a place for this. Okay. There's a blue-white build I have that I love. It's a blue-white control build that doesn't play Ancestral Recall, which is like pretty classic for that deck. Uh, and instead, it looks to you, you got a kind of a widespread, but it also plays Strip Mine and it plays Crucible of Worlds. And you play Academy Ruins in that deck. You have like an Urza Saga package. Um, and getting to Academy Ruins this card over and over again is kind of hot. Mm. That's where I would try it. But I don't think we're playing this in like a blue moon, like sure. stock kind sure, of sure, list, sure. you know? All right. What about Is It Blitz? Maybe it's three mana two one doesn't attack any better, but then it's gonna recast the spell. Three mana is a lot of yeah mana for that deck. All right. It's also blue blue. I could see trying blue it blue out blue in, in my goofy academy lists. Yeah, just to recast a ponder, or recast a transmute artifact. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the seven mana, which academy you could tinker twice, right? Like <laughs> right, yeah. 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 Maybe oh. that's too cute. You Who can knows? cast up evil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, you well, need no, 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 because it's power. power. Not, not, yeah. Six oh, power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we got a tempered steel. Yeah. Play. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. No, I want to see the. I want to see the versions of the tempered steel. Yeah. Deck. All right. Tempered steel count is at three right now. Let's yeah. see how much more we get today. Yeah. We won't force it though. All right, uh, Nelly. Let's move on. Drafna, founder of Latnam. All right. Now we finally get to meet them after playing so many of their spells and stuff. We got their uh, legacy, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one generic and one blue for a two-one legendary human artificer advisor. All right, you advisor fans. One and the same mana, two mana to return target artifact you control to his owner's hand. What? Oh boy, that's that doesn't. You don't have to tap to do that, but you can tap for this other ability. Three generic and tap Drafna. <laughs> Copy target artifact spell you control. Oh. Oh boy. Okay, so we're going infinite with paradox immediately. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we find this, we're just immediately infinite with paradox. So that's cool. And can good. you give me one quick loop as an example of how that would work? Yeah. So you have a paradox engine and several mana rocks, and then you cast Drafna. You untap your mana rocks, and then you pay two to return one of your mana rocks. So then you tap the rest of them. Float a bunch of mana, cast that first mana rock, untap the other mana rocks. So it's not even you like... You do that and you have an infinite mana. It's yeah. like uh, Paradox, this, and literally any other board state. You don't even need like a specific yeah. other combo piece. Well, you, that I seems mean, cool and fair. <laughs> yeah, you need to have at least five mana worth of mana rocks to pull it off. But I mean, you're going to get, get Paradox Academy in play, right? Yeah, Yeah. You 
you're probably going to get infinite storm and infinite mana right away. And then if you untap with it, you can start doubling up on your stuff, which sounds really fun. Yep. <laughs> you can also just like, I don't know, tap your, like you, it, you can throw in commonplace paradox engine, uh, like utility cards, like sensei's top or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, just draw your deck with that as well. So you're not just like getting infinite mana. Mm. That sounds, it's a weird thing to say, but like paradox decks are, they're really good at making infinite mana. The hard part is then killing what? Then what? With. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a classic big mana issue. Yeah. They've, yes. they've, well, they've gotten a lot better at it, but this is like an interesting piece where it lets you get infinite mana, but then also just lets you kill them. A lot mm. of the times, like it, it kind of fills that like rings a bright hearth role. Yeah, that's a two mana two one that can attack sometimes too. <laughs> okay, let's you not definitely get killed me. No, I mean, I'm, there's I'm a very on this real card. game yeah. where yeah. Nelson and I were sitting down at probably Parsonage or something like that. I was on control, he was on Academy, and he beat me to death with a trinket, trinket mage because nothing else yeah. happened. Right? Like sometimes these two power utility creatures get there in these mm -hmm. grindy matchups. I will also give a shout out to the monkey's paw, though. Drafna likes Wishclaw Talisman, right? Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, love, you love it when your Wishclaw Talisman gets broken. Hey? Yeah. You know, I, that, that deck's half devoted Nobody's to touching that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right. Next up, we've got the Hulking Metamorph. So, nine mana, seven, seven artifact creature shapeshifter. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact creature in addition to its other types, and its power and toughness are equal to the metamorph's power and toughness. But wait, it has a prototype form. So, two blue, blue, so four mana enters as a three, three. So, this is a clone spell that enters as a copy of something else, but you give it its a new power and toughness. Now, at first, I wasn't su super hot on this because there's a lot of other clone spells that we already play in the format that, well, we don't, we have access to in the format that we don't play. Classic one would be a Phyrexian Metamorph. You know, three mana, it's cheaper. It comes in as a bunch of different stuff. And then Wheeler's like, but Phyrexian Metamorph doesn't let something that small become a 7-7. Seven, seven. And mm. we've suddenly, Wheeler and I, are, our brains are always thinking about these Tinker decks and these um, these uh, goblin welder, welder these decks. Goblin Welder decks and the ability to turn very small, innocent things into large 7-7 seven, seven forms and have ETBs with them. And it's got the flexibility of being able to come down a little bit earlier. I think this is not the most flexible clone you have access to. I mean, if you really want to clone stuff, we still have Phantasmal Image, we have Glass Pool Mimic, we have Phyrexian Metamorph. So this isn't your first pick when it comes to cloning stuff, but in the right home, this could, you know, our, our creative juices are flowing a little bit with this one. Do we already have a card that's like, the, make a clone of an artifact, except now it's a creature? Is that old news? Because we have the Metamorph and like the cunning thing from... Um, Tarkir, where it's like you can clone anything, mm -hmm. but this is like you could clone your time vault, but you could turn your time vault into a three three, so that then you can untap it with your like seeker of skybreak or whatever instead. <laughs> oh. Not that that's like a great plan, but just oh, it opens up the flexibility of, of like mm -hmm. you can make an artifact that matters now be a creature, so it gets affected by creature stuff. Not that I can think of. It, I don't know if this is going to lead to a combo. It's just every time there's a little door like I that. do sure, like your sure, scenario sure, sure, where yeah. like you have a time vault in play already <laughs> or. or or you know, yeah. alarm bell or whatever. Intruder <laughs> alarm. You time vault, yeah, but you yeah. can't untap it. Yeah. You go, you go, yeah, you have time vault, but you can't untap it. We have intruder alarm <laughs> and hulking metamorph. Like, send me your deck. Yeah. Oh, Finally, <laughs> we've broken two cards that nobody's ever broken before. Oh. Time vault and intruder alarm. You're welcome. You're welcome, internet. Yeah. Next yeah. up, underworld <laughs> breach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one's broken that one yet. Yeah, no. All right. Anyone else want to talk about the metamorph here? I think I hit the main points on it. Yeah. Stoked that it's uncommon. It's a little niche. It's kind of cool. All right. Uh, Wheeler, what's next? Hercule Master Wizard. One blue blue for a 2-4 legendary human wizard advisor. At the beginning of your end step, if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand, and the rest go on the bottom. I'm going to mention these welder decks over and over again, <laughs> and it's just because you just get to play this kind of trash. I don't mean trash as in bad. I mean trash as in, like, 
You know the movie Crank? Like with Jason Statham? Where he can't yeah. stop. He has yeah. to keep his heart rate up. That kind of trash. <laughs> where it's just like, oh yeah, I just want to cast this and play a Mishra's bobble. I'll just draw a card. And then like, this doesn't die to Bolt. They can crack us it, but that doesn't matter. You could crack us by Lurus and you didn't. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, this card just in a debt. Zero mana artifacts are broken. Yeah. They're pretty good. They're so good. Or just playing this on four, being like, Hercule, bolt your thing. Draw another bolt. So let's let's talk about this card in a more standard context because I don't think everybody's going to be playing this welder deck. Sure. And I'll answer first. I don't know if I'd like it in a traditional deck. I think no. it it it's it's pretty slow. It's pretty vulnerable. It doesn't necessarily provide the utility you want, even if you do get to untap with it. That's my that's my initial read of the card. When let, you, what? Well, I, I was going to say, let me. Re this might affect what you were saying too. Is let me restructure instead of saying welder decks, let me say mox decks. So like decks where your point spread is primarily like triple mox or double mox. Um, and you're, you know, doing, you're maybe doing artifact stuff, likely doing artifact stuff, but like, you don't have to go that hard. You're just play like playing this on turn two or playing it late in the game with a bunch of other cheap spells. Does that change, you know, like we don't have to loop anything. No, I was just going to say that like, usually when you see double blue in a card, you don't think, okay, let's play some spells on my own turn. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it does ask that of you. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But honestly, I don't know. The format seems to be just getting more and more proactive every year. So I, I think it's totally fine to just like include this and plan to say, Hey, like what is my spread by card type, you know, mm -hmm. and let's try to make sure that I'm not like there's eight instants or something when they, where it could be like, 24 sorceries instead of 12 or yeah. whatever. The, yeah, the formatting on this ability too is, it actually benefits the more proactive play pattern where you can duress or hand attack, make sure the coast is clear, and then develop Hercule right. and it'll still trigger yeah. on your yeah. end step. That's like true. That, that is um, true. All right. Yeah, I, yeah. You just gained it. Win one more point in my brain. I don't know. It's always tough because so often you play something like this and your opponent's questing beast is like, that's it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then you die. Right? Yeah. You're like, but but I would have been able to do something really cool in two turns while the goblin player is like, take your time. For like, keep setting up, sure. Four toughness is so good. Mm. If if I play this against red and it eats two burn spells or like it pushes my opponent to like use their giant, well, not giant growth, but a sure. brute force or whatever. Trick, whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Glad of it. You did your job there, bud. Hmm. That's, yeah. That's the card advantage. That's okay that for case. me. That's fair. Yeah. I also just like that if you, you know, if you do untap with this, next time you draw a Demir Talisman and like you needed to actually draw gas, hey, you drew gas too. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's move on. Nelly. Sky Strike Officer, another soldier, uh, two and a blue for a two three flying. Oh, nice stats. Whenever this attacks, create a one one colorless soldier artifact creature token that isn't tapped in attacking, and also tap three untapped soldiers you control. Draw a card. Okay, I don't know if it's exactly getting into artifact decks, but seems great in soldier tribal. That's all I have to say about this card. Yeah, soldiers. <laughs> the stats are good. Yeah. 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 All right, and to me, and I believe the final blue card, yeah, Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim. Five mana, four loyalty, Teferi Planeswalker for three blue blue. Has a static ability. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi. Zero, draw a card. Basically should be plus one, you know, but yeah. Minus two, create a two two blue spirit creature token with vigilance, and whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. And the ultimate for 12th, which it's kind of hard to understand how long it'll take you to get there, but maybe, I don't know. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into its owner's library. Let me read that again. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to their hand, so they get one permanent to hand. Then each non-land permanent they control gets shuffled into their library. Oh, that's rude. Cool. Is this good? I, I suppose it's the next thing to do. Five minute planeswalker. You gonna say it or am I? How about on the count of three? One, two, three. Wheel no. of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave a thumbs down. Yeah, this is a lot of words 
to say doesn't really do much to the board. Like like five mana draw card is not great. Um, five loyalty means it might get hit for a turn, but I think your opponent can often just choose to ignore this. Like that being said, there are there have been other five mana planeswalkers that just said draw a card. Uh, Allison has historically kicked people with the rock and the planeswalker mm -hmm. there. Like, uh, wasn't there a five mana Opnixless? Yeah, that that just like it made it five time demon though when it shows up, right? It does that for. Or did she play the other one? Too? She played, she the played old just one. the draw card and yeah, destroy a creature one. It was yeah. just yeah, right. it was just like uh, it comes, but it also had the line destroy a creature Obnixilis right, which has reignited. reignited. Yeah, which that had one the, I actually play a lot too. Right. It it has the ability to impact the board more. Like sometimes a five mana planeswalker just says draw a card is pretty good. That being said, the rest of the abilities on this card are, are kind of lackluster. Yeah, I, I mean, it's anybody just, want to come to Teferi's I Just have a here? caveat. Yeah, no, I, I did agree. So we had that moment and then like, yeah, I do think this card's mostly bad. But I've just realized now that if you cast it and then immediately time twister... You have eight mana, okay. <laughs> Go on, yeah, okay. Yeah, you, you crack your memory yeah, jar. I'm trying going. to find a place for it. Yeah, yeah but if you crack your memory jar, it's only at eleven. You're not, you can't even ult yet. Now you need to cast one more Gataxian probe, and then you get to ultimate the same turn it came in. So if that is your plan, it's like a two card combo. It's eight mana, <laughs> three card, right? You have to draw a card. Yeah, okay, all right, all right, all right. But can I? Can I we're, give... we're in egg scape shift. <laughs> Can I give you a, a very realistic uh, scenario? You, you cast this in the loot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cast this and your opponent kills you with their board. I mean, I think I think it's worth mentioning that like you play it down tick and then it dies to shock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shock. yeah. That's, yeah. Like that's so bad. And you're like, you're not even tilted by the fact that your opponent's playing shock, right? <laughs> Why play? You can play Minsk and Boo in this form. Yeah. You yeah. can play Hero Dominaria. Sorry, Teferi, I don't but, think you're going to make the cut. But just think, for one more mana than Misk and Boo, you could have this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's start talking about black cards. Wheeler? Ashnod, Flesh Mechanist, uh, a black 1-1 one, one legendary creature, human artificer, with death touch. Whenever Ashnod attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, create a tapped power stone and pay five generic exile creature card from your graveyard. Create a tapped 3-3 three, three colorless zombie artifact creature token. So to con just to familiarize some folks at home with power stones, uh, they are artifacts that tap to add one generic mana that cannot be spent to cast non-artifact spells yeah they so, have like a double negative there they yeah can, they can they're good for everything other than casting non-artifact spells casting artifacts activated uh, abilities, activated yeah. abilities. Yeah. yes for instance the one on ash here yeah cumulative upkeep costs i think this is not great i don't know if i'm how excited i am to get tapped power stones for sacrificing my like even sacrificing something like a blood ghast, like this takes up a slot. That's my big thing with it. The five man to exile a creature, like tap three threes are cool, but I just, there's like, I, this kind of thing is just getting killed by a forked bolt or just like trading with a two, two. And you're like, Oh, okay. That was kind of annoying. I think a lot of people see the line sacrifice another creature and they're like aristocrats, wink, wink. And no. <laughs> exactly but it, it, it's worth mentioning yeah absolutely for that reason right like there's a lot of words in this card i don't know if mono black agar has a home for this thing either it doesn't yeah. have two power i like the <laughs> yeah. death touch mm -hmm. yeah that's all i got i like the art yeah the art's, the art's incredible. great yeah all right nelly ashnaz intervention a one black mana instant for until end of turn target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains when this creature dies or, or is put into exile from the battlefield return it to its owner's hand so you can recast the spell. It doesn't put it back into play. I probably wouldn't play this either. Doesn't give a death touch or anything. I like that it gets around exile removal. I think we misread this card. Yeah, I did think we, we did too. When we were going through the set, I, I think, swear this I, put I, it on the I, battlefield. I thought this put it in the battlefield yeah. too. This went through three pairs of <laughs> eyes. All of us thought it was good, and then we read it out loud, and we realized it wasn't. Oh, let's They've see. been letting us put it back on the battlefield Get lately. Plus yeah. two, plus zero when it dies, exile. Uh, yeah, of course, got it. Yeah, it yeah goes we've back seen on the this battlefield. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah, little yeah. bit of redundancy. Whoops. <laughs> That's our bad team. 
<laughs> All right, next up, me. Dreams of Steel and Oil. This is a sorcery for a single block pip. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or creature from it, then choose an artifact or creature card from their graveyard and exile the chosen cards. And it's worth mentioning that you can just have one of them, which is kind of great. Like this either just hits the graveyard or the hand. It doesn't need to have both because the only legal target is your opponent. And I like this specifically because it does have that flexibility. If it was just one or the other, and I also like it because it's exile. It's pretty narrow, but I think it does enough that you could you could play this and be fine with it. And also we've been mentioning how much more proactive the format has been and how much more prevalent high-powered artifacts are. So I think you're going to have a lot of hits with this. Yeah, there's a lot more decks just playing Urza Saga or Ledger Shredder or both decks that would traditionally not play any or like not play any Urza Saga targets. You know, it's kind of weird. Control decks used to play like Pithing Needle just for Pithing Needle. And then it got, you know, pushed out. But now they're playing Pithing Needle again for right, the sake of Pithing Needle. Of Urza Saga. I didn't even think mm -hmm. of that. That's sweet. Um, but then they're just also so proactive. Yeah. And mucking someone's Uro as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I like this a lot better than Divest. I do wonder, this does beg the question, do we have a new friend in the auto-include for hand attack spells? Like, is this good enough to be there? I think this can get, this can talk with Dread Fugue. Because there's like <laughs> the the Holy Trinity. Um, Thoughtseize, Duress, Inquisition. Yeah. And then you have uh, him to Torak sometimes. Collective Brutality. Collective Brutality is a lot there. Like this, this is like number six, number seven maybe? Well... Dread Fugue is like the the one with cleave one mana. You look at their hand, take a two or less, or you can pay three to take anything. Mm. It's pretty good, especially in like Grixis kind of Delvey kind of decks. Um, and I think if you're building your deck and you're like, I want more hand attack, you will now have to pick. Like, mm. I don't think you're loading up on every single one of them unless you're some sicko pox player or whatever. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, but I do think that there is a genuine, like, you know, am I worried about blue decks or am I worried about creature slash blue decks? Sure. Like they, they, there's game for both these cards. I think this card might be better than dread fugue, hmm. but it's a little difficult against like, is there a thorical player in the room? Maybe yeah. that's my, maybe that's or my cutoff. reanimator sort of thing like that it's got it's well got this is absurd against reanimate yeah exactly yeah oh i thought you meant in favor of dread feud because dread feud no, hits their no, reanimation no, 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 spell no. <laughs> yeah okay all right let's move on and go back to you wheeler gix yogmoth preter and that's how it's pronounced one black black for a three three legendary creature phyrexian preter whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents its controller may pay one life if they do draw a card four black 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 discard x cards exile the top x cards of target opponent's library you may play lands and cast spells from among cards exile this way without paying their mana cost um we included this because if we didn't you'd get angry <laughs> Woo! don't think it's playable sorry folks there is another 100-card format where this would be really fun. <laughs> I mean, it's specifically templated to work in Commander, right? Like that, yeah. The, the, the language is very specific for that. Yeah. Um, can you very briefly talk on why? I don't want to allow my opponent to draw cards. Right? No. no. Oh. They're not going to draw cards. Oh, right, right. Yeah, sorry, it's sorry, only, sorry. It's only opponents, right? I... Like in, in Commander, if they hit your opponent, yeah. they can draw cards. Yes. In 1v1, only you get to draw I cards. I only get to draw cards. Uh, this is a three-mana 3-3 three, three without an ETB uh, that I guess I... Like, where am I playing this? Honestly, I'm realizing now that I've never had access to Edric in Mono Black Aggro, so I'm probably going to try it, even though it's like... It's a pretty bad Edric, right? Like, it's 3-3 three, three for three, which is nice. You just got access to an Edric. Oh, we did earlier. Yeah, Sorry, braids arisen nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. that's, that's good I in the think, tokens one. Yeah, I don't know. I like that card too. I, I think that that one's got to be like a mono black aggro draw cards muck your opponent more than this thing, right? I don't know. I should probably try both of them though. 
Oh, you have to pay life, which is not great, but we're used to that. Yeah, yeah, you want. Yeah. I mostly just got turned off it because I saw the second ability, and I'm like, okay, this is for <laughs> okay, Commander, yeah, yeah. and I shut my brain off. But it's like, eh, maybe in the really aggro black, like maybe Black Mold will try it. Just just for the first ability. It's a Zendark Horser. <clears throat> yeah. Dies to Bolt and gets Caracas. Like, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's probably bad. What's not to love? <laughs> All right, Nelly, talk about the next card. Gixian Puppeteer. Three bl black for a Phyrexian Warlock, four, three creature. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Whoa, maybe that's getting like templated as a keyword ability now. When Gixian Puppeteer dies, re return another target creature with mana value three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so right away we've got every now and then you get a turn cycle worth of regular Shale Dread activations, right? If you can draw two cards in a turn... And, and it works on your opponent's turn too. But so every turn that you manage to draw two cards, you get, you know, the little two point drain life that we've seen on recent powerhouse Shale Dread, the Apocalypse. The stats are worse. The mana values or the mana cost is a bit easier. And then when this dies, you get to reanimate something. So I don't immediately have a home for it, but it just seems like it has enough going on that if you want to put it in your recursion deck or maybe like blue black x cantripping deck then it could be okay when i look at the second line of text i think of something like um recurring nightmare but i'd much rather have body launderer which was a, a more recent version of this than than this specific card i don't know it maybe if you just want that redundancy maybe if you're just like a two color recurring nightmare deck and you just really want to abuse those like low to the ground etbs I don't know. You're shaking your hand. Is there one other it, creature it combos with that we forgot? Sorry. No, I, I'm trying. I don't think it loops with anything. Then you like Sandy I mean, B for a second there. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Does well, it you could work with Safi. Yeah. You could, yeah. but like. Then what? Yeah. <laughs> everything like so many things loop with Safi that are right. cheaper and also just more flexible in a way. Sure. Um, because I think you'd want the first ability and the second ability because there's already cards that yeah that do that. I, yeah, I, for sure. Yeah, I th I think that if you are playing the Rexer deck, there yeah. is the conversation you have with yourself of am I playing Shieldred or am I playing Body Launderer? And you commit to one of those paths, mm. but you don't pull the like, ooh, why not both? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that's, yeah. So, I don't know. All right. Okay, watch out for this one. Yeah, maybe, maybe just thumbs down. Me. Uh, Misery's Shadow. This is a two mana, two, two shade for one and a black. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. And then there's another line of text. One, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's been a long time since we've just had a shade. Yeah. Well, we've uh, never a, had one that just pumps for generic. Oh, no, it's not true. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that doesn't, especially one that doesn't require like a colored pip for this. Actually, sorry. One of my like first most successful decks when I was a little kid played the only other card I can think of that has this exact same bottom line of text. Remember what it's called? Nyaka Shade from Prophecy. Oh, no. Is that that's, the one? No, I was like a halfway grown kid by the yeah. time Prophecy came out. No, Legends had this card called, I want to say like. Uh, is it Hellfire Ants or Carrion Ants? Oh, Carrion Ants. Is it Carrion Ants? Four mana. Oh, so no. so two black black for a zero one, but then generic yeah. plus one plus one to left turn. Let's get you to bed. Grant. Right? <laughs> <laughs> get me my pills. Let's get, let's get you to bed, Grant. So yeah. one, absolutely. I need my tea. So that's a four mana zero yeah. one that pumps. <laughs> it was so a just, four mana zero one. Let's just take a second to appreciate here that traditionally shades have a terrible <laughs> uh, cost what, whatever that vanilla yeah, ratio yeah, is, right? right yeah. And the fact that yeah. this is a two mana two two that also has the shade ability is incredible. And that like and we're we're ignoring and. the most powerful line yeah. of this card, which is the static ability that just hates. And it's only one sided. It's not even symmetrical because it's twenty twenty two magic. And apparently, you don't do symmetrical stuff in twenty twenty two magic anymore. No. This card is a slam dunk in every <laughs> black aggressive deck, even some mid range decks. If you're splashing black and you play creatures and you just want to hate your opponent's graveyard, this card is excellent. It's flipping the bird to every Sandy B player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Wheeler, take the next one. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, uh, one of the many good gorgers. Mm, uh, hi, Gorge. <laughs> seven mana, seven, five. Menace, lifelink, ward, pay life equal to Phyrexian Flesh Gorger's power. Prototype, one black, black for a 3-3. Three, three. So you can either play this as a three mana, three, three, menace, lifelink, ward, pay three life, or some more if you, you know, got a rancor on it or whatever. Uh, or a seven mana, seven, five, menace, lifelink, pay seven, idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, 
Has anyone ever been more proud to wear the grafted war gear than this oh thing? Wow. <laughs> like, this is big. Yeah. Uh, are you playing this in mono black? I think so. Yeah. I'm like, playing this in battle bots. Like, I have it, a grafted yeah, war gear yeah. in that deck. <laughs> you know? This, yeah. this card is perfect in those, like, aggressive black or black X decks that are like, oh, what if I just play value reanimate? And now you just like have like a real value. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good call. I might play in the in the uh, welder kind of decks too. What emphasis on the welder for this one? Because you know if I play it as a three mana three three, it's just kind of a nice speed bump against red or aggressive yeah. decks. Yeah. But then also just cheating it out, uh, you're not losing that game. <laughs> yeah, oh. That ward ability is so crazy. That's so big. Yeah. Is that our last card? I'm not entirely certain. And okay. that that's it. Wow. Great. This That's has great. been, this is a really cool set so far. I'm really looking forward to the other parts. So to you, the dear listener, uh, this is going to be a three-part set review. So the next episode, we're going to get green and red and gold. And traditionally, we just add artifacts sandwiched somewhere else. There's a lot of artifacts in the set as evidenced by the fact that we put the prototype in the colors just because there's so many artifacts to talk about. As always, if there's cards that you think we missed that you want to talk about, let us know in the comments down below. This episode has been brought to you by you with your support of the Patreon over at patreon.com slash learning ready run. I've been Serge, joined by the wonderful Nelson. I haven't had my fiber yet. And Wheeler. Huh? Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>